Hey guys, welcome back to another video. As we all know, there are many different portable power stations being sold online. The Max Oak that you see here, as well as the Jackery power station, I did reviews on and both performed very well. But there are many other units that do not perform as well as these two units. Now the one thing I do not like about many of these units is that they lack an area light. Now the Jackery 500 model has a light on the end, which is more or less like a beam light or a spotlight. And you really don't want to use that inside of a tent if you're camping. You want more of an area light. And if I go to take this outside at night to work on my vehicle in the dark, I want to have the area lit up where I'm working. And the spotlight that some of the units have is not really good enough for that. It just beams the light where you need it instead of illuminating the entire area. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to add a Cobb LED light panel to any of these units. And the Cobb LED panel that I'm going to be using is this one right over here. It's a 12 volt panel and you can also get this in a different shape if you wanted, such as a rectangular strip. The good thing about these, as long as you do not overdrive them, you do not have to put a heat sink on the back. I tested this one right here and at around 12 and a half volts, it will not get too hot and you can run it continuously. Now I'm going to be adding it to this Jackery unit because it's more popular and I'm going to be adding it to the back side of the unit. So we're going to have a panel here and there's also going to be a switch and it's going to be tied into the system so it only can be powered up when the 12 volt button is pressed in. Now before I open up this Jackery unit which requires a Phillips screwdriver and a hex key, first let me show you exactly what you're going to need to install the light on this unit. You're going to need a push on push off switch, the 12 volt Cobb LED panel like you see here, or a similar one. I'm going to place a link in the video description area to make it easier for you to find these parts. You're going to need a foot or two of two conductor hookup wire, 20 gauge is more than enough, a 1N4001 rectifier diode, and you're going to need a fuse rated up to one amp, or I'm going to be using, which is even better than a fuse, is a PPTC that's known as a resettable fuse. Now the way this works, this one is designed to handle up to 500 milliamps of current. This mini panel only draws around 300 milliamps of current, so as long as you stay below that 500 milliamp rating, it's going to allow all the current to flow into the load or in this case, the Cobb LED panel. If you exceed the 500 milliamp rating or these wires get shorted going to this LED panel, what's going to happen, this component is going to heat up in temperature. As the temperature gets higher and higher, the resistance between these two legs is going to get higher. It's going to reach a point where very little, if any, current flows to this panel. Once the fault has been removed from the circuit, this would cool down. When it cools down, it's going to let full current flow into the load once again. It's a very useful component because you do not have to worry about replacing fuses in the event of a short circuit. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be taking this panel and tying it into the 12 volt output on this unit. And we're going to do that by tapping into the back side of this accessory socket. Now, if the portable power station you have does not have a built-in accessory socket, but it has one of these that plugs in, then instead of tapping into the back of the socket, you're going to locate the jack where this would go in, and you would tap into those wires, the positive and negative. By wiring it up this way, it will not allow the Cobb LED panel to power up unless you turn on the 12 volt supply first. Once the 12 volt supply is powered up, then you'd be able to push this power button and turn on the Cobb light. The purpose of this diode is to lower the input voltage to this mini panel. I want to keep the voltage around 12.5 and by doing that it's going to prevent this from getting too hot. You'll have great light output and you will not require a heat sink. This unit here has a regulated output of around 13.3 volts. The Max Oak is right around 13 volts. But some units do not have a regulated output. If it does not have a regulated output you can still use it but what's going to happen as this battery drains down towards 9.6 or 9.8 volts when it nears the fully depleted state, this Cobb LED light is going to get dimmer and dimmer. 
Not a big deal, but with this unit, it will remain bright all the way down. Okay, let me turn this around. Over here is the screws on this unit. They're all Phillips. And on the end of the unit, you can see over here, there's four, as well as this side. These require a hex key. So let me unscrew everything and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, all the screws have been removed from the side panels as well as the rear side. If you look at the bottom, using a razor blade, I cut straight across that seam across the label. Keep in mind, if the unit that you're working on has warranty remaining on it, you are going to void the warranty by making this modification. Now the last thing that has to be done Underneath these neoprene feet are four more screws. So let me pop these off. And as you can see, here are the screws. And just to show you how easy it is to remove the feet, take a butter knife, go right in between on top, push down, and just peel back. And later on, I'll just clean off the excess before I use my E6000 adhesive to put the feet back on. Now, in order to separate these two halves, the side on each end needs to be popped off because there's clips that keep this from spreading apart. To remove that panel, you're going to look for a little space on either side. Take a butter knife, push it in, and you can see that these two little protrusions were keeping both halves of this from spreading apart. Do the same on this side. And in case you're wondering, both of these are exactly the same. Separate, there we go. And these pieces just go right in here. Push this off to the side. Okay, you can see the top board over here. This is the inverter board. Down here is your battery bank. And right over here is your battery management board. Now what I'm going to be tying into is right back here it says 12V and there's a red wire leading right into it. As you can see on this Jackery Explorer 240 this area right over here is wide open so it's the perfect space for me to drill a hole in the cover to mount the switch. And that area on the cover is right over here I could drill a hole right here or on top. I think I'm going to position it right over here so when I'm holding the unit I could push it with my finger. To drill a very clean hole in the plastic, you're going to want to use a step drill, also known as a univit. I marked it right over there. I'm going to drill it very slowly. One more. I'm going to keep checking the size very close. And as you can see, that fits perfect. Now I want to show you something on the back side. You have this ridge in the plastic as well as the other side. In order to tighten down the nut securely, I'm going to take these cutters and just trim away the ridge here and there so I can put the nut on. Let me do that and I'll come right back. Okay, you can see right over here, the plastic has been cut away and it's nice and flush. Now when the switch is inserted, I can tighten this down all the way. And right here, you can see how nice that looks installed on the cover. The next thing I need to do is separate the ends of the wire, and I'm going to strip about an eighth of an inch off, and I'm going to solder it onto this Cobb LED. The positive is the round circle, and the square on the right is the negative. Once that's done, I'm going to position it near the top and I'm going to secure it with double stick tape and E6000 adhesive. Once that's bonded, it will not come off. And right over here, you can see a very nicely soldered connection to that board. The next thing I did was drill a 1 8 inch hole right in the center of this panel in the right location for the wires to pass through. Right here you can see a very narrow strip of double stick adhesive was applied to the surface after the rubbing alcohol. The next thing I'm going to do is take the E6000, apply a bead right here and below it. This is what it looks like when it's bonded in position. 
The next thing I'm going to do is a little bit of clear nail polish. Over those. And that is it. Let that dry. Let's go on to the next step. Now to make it much easier for me to tie into this accessory socket, I'm going to remove this whole battery bank with the inverter board. There are four screws, one on this side right here, another one right over there, and there's two underneath, one here and one under here. And as you can see, it came right out of there. I'm going to undo this connector, and as you can see with this removed, I have plenty of room to work in that area. And remove all four screws from the accessory socket. And this whole piece now can slide right out. See right there? This side is the negative that I'm going to be tying into. I'm going to solder in that location. And then the positive is going to be connected right over here on that spot. Okay? The negative is attached to the rear side of this board and all the screws are back in. The next thing I'm going to do is solder on the PPTC or the resettable fuse. You may be using a 500 milliamp fuse or a 1 amp axial fuse, but for me I'll be using the PPTC and after the PPTC I'll be connecting to the anode of the diode and then the cathode of the diode, which is the white line, will be connected to this point. Now you can see the PPTC is soldered in position. The other leg is going to be curled up. Over here you can see the line on the diode. That's the cathode. That goes to the Cobb LED panel. The side with no marking is the anode. We're going to solder that to the other leg of the PPTC. Before soldering the diode to the PPTC, I'm going to slide over some heat shrink first. Here it is completed with the heat shrink. There's a little bit of adhesive right here to keep things from moving as well as this nylon tie. Let me put the battery back into position and then we're going to work on connecting everything up. The next thing I'm going to do is take the copper colored wire right here and I'm going to solder it to one of the terminals of the switch and the other switch terminal is going to go to the copper colored wire. That goes to the positive of the Cobb LED light panel. The silver wire on this side is going to connect to the silver of this side. This is what it looks like, all soldered together. There's excess here, so I can lift this up and out of the way of this battery pack. Let me put it all back together. And here it is, all put back together. The feet are all glued on. Everything went back together nicely there. And check this out. Look at that. This will not turn on unless you go over here first. Put the 12 volt power on, and then I can turn it around and push the button. To demonstrate, I'm going to take this into a dark room and power it up. In case of a power failure, and you can see how well that lights up this bathroom, and outside when you're working on your vehicle. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.